This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, the guy who puts up with me, <laughs> his name is Larry Bubbles Brown, and he's out there in San Frangima, California. Uh, how's, how is it in San Francisco? I People keep telling me when I say, gee, and I dream about going back to my hometown where I was born and raised, and they say, don't come back. It's terrible out here. It's bad, although I'm thinking it. I think with the homeless thing, and maybe it's like this in every major city now, but you got the homeless thing with uh, tents all over the place. Uh, you know, we, we don't have tents here in New York uh, uh, because it, tents will not protect you from the winter. So we always get these very cold winters, and so it's a question of where do they go. Where they go and camp out is in the subways. You know, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they don't set up tents or anything, but that's where they take their sleeping bags and so on. And then when we had COVID, our governor, Cuomo, uh, closed down the uh, subways at midnight. So they all had to go. They had to go somewhere else, and they wound up in front of my building, uh, sitting on couches and things like that. It's But I, I hear it's really bad in San Francisco. I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't see... D- downtown they they keep trying to uh, put tents up behind the marina safeway yeah and those those will last like a week and then they they get them they push them out i don't see human feces in the street okay but i hear you've got that in san francisco oh if you go downtown i hear the yeah, it's a su- open sewer really wow and then you'd be shocked at how they destroyed van ness avenue and wait a minute van ness avenue was that's where all the car dealerships were when I was growing up, and then yeah, hardly. I don't think there's any left on there anymore. What what has happened to Van Ness Street? Well, they've taken the uh, they've taken the two middle lanes out, and they're constructing a bus lane in the middle of Van Ness. Oh, and now they've taken so there's only two lanes on each side now, and no parking. So all the small businesses on Van Ness have gone out of business because oh. no one can park there. So. Who who came up with this? stupid scheme i don't know i they just started i didn't see anything in the news about it one day i just started to see this construction on it which has been going on now for five years and uh, i don't know whose idea it was but it's uh, really screwed things up well the problem you have here is and i think what they were trying to solve more than anything okay was um uh what, what's the word i'm looking for uh, just the i took my pill last night so i don't can't remember anything uh, it, it's their way of minimizing the amount of the use of cars. That could be. Uh, that, oh, they, yeah, they're definitely trying to do that, but I don't think it's going to work. It's. Uh, I think San Francisco is like the only city that doesn't have a a freeway that goes around or through it. So all uh, the traffic is, yeah. has to be funneled through Lombard and Van Ness to get across to the city. They were going to do it. You know, you have that. Uh, you have an uh, overhead. Or what do they call it? That, that road. Double deckers. Double decker. But it ends uh, down around. Uh, I can't remember what the street is now. Uh, it ends and, on the, around Sixth Street. Yeah, and then you got to go there. down that street yeah. in order to get to. Uh, I'm trying to remember the other Chestnut, and I think it, what, what's the main street that goes through the the. Uh, see how my how I Lombard. Forget? Lombard. 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 You take Lombard to the bridge. All right. So you got to go through. There's no way you can get to the bridge except by going through the town. Through the city, yeah. And they thought of it one time they were gonna, that freeway was actually supposed to go further all the way over to the Golden Gate Bridge. The Embarcadero Freeway is supposed to go from the Bay Bridge, uh, run along the waterfront all the way up to the Golden Gate Bridge. Right. Never did it. No, and I think it would have been, probably would have been looked horrific, but... Instead, what they did, they made most of the streets in the city one way, so 
like Pine Street and Franklin, and those streets kind of became freeways into themse- under themselves. And Isn't it funny how I forget all the names of the streets there? Yeah. You know, really? I mean, yeah. Because I was trying to remember the street where the freeway ended, and it was a, it was the one right next to Van Ness. You know. Uh, what? Uh, Franklin. Fra- was that Franklin? That's what? Franklin, yeah, which is one-way traffic from uh, 101 ends down way yeah, that's down there it. by yeah, market. That, that's and, the one, Franklin. And then Franklin goes yeah. down to the down to the um, uh, marina, marina, and then you take a right, a left, and you go down to Lombard, Lombard and go up to the bridge. Go up to the bridge, but if you had a, a freeway, you'd be there in seconds. You know. Yeah, and the, you know the original. <laughs> The original plans for the freeways in the late 50s, they were going to have a double-decker freeway to replace 19th Avenue. Oh, really? Which would, would have been insane. Well, 19th Avenue, if I remember it correctly, was probably one of the easiest to traverse. You know? Yes, except uh, they've never never been able to synchronize. You hit, like, so many red lights. You'd no, no, they did synchronize. They, when, I was a, when I was younger, the lights were synchronized until you got to the park. But at, at, at what they were, they were synchronized. So if you went exactly like thirty miles an hour, you would make every light. Oh, that'd be great! I wish they'd do that now because you hit about ten red lights when you go down there. Yeah, but people wouldn't know what to do if you did that these days. You know, I mean, in those days, you had to know be a San Franciscan to know that if you traverse that street and you did it at thirty miles an hour and you got a green light to go, you would have a green light all the way to the park. You know, Steve Kravitz used to have a joke. If the traffic lights are synchronized for 30, they'll work at 60. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's, it was synchronized for 30, if you could make it work at 60. <laughs> I wonder if you could. Uh, uh, you know, but anyway, so, you know... Um, See, here in New York, I mean, New York is impossible, too. There is, much like San Francisco, well, let's see here. Can you traverse the city on a freeway or on a fast road that goes all the way around? And the answer is no. You can't. Uh, you can traverse pretty fast on the east side of the of the city. But on the west side of the city, they tore down the freeway because it was falling apart. And one day, people were going to be driving on it, and it was just going to collapse. So they did away with it and replaced it with a street along that part of the uh, uh, city. It's a little slower than it was. Yeah. So you had those things going on, too. Cities are, uh, you know, the trouble is that most of these cities, the plans for them were built 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. This is a lot of time I kept mentioning, probably about 80. And because I, when you think about my life, well, I'm 80 years old, 81 years old. So we're talking about 1939. Hell, they were, you know, the, 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 the traffic scheme in New York was figured out before I was born. Yeah, That's, America doesn't do well at planning for things. They just Well, here's the thing, okay? What I'm saying is the reason they're probably trying to prevent cars from coming in because they're going, hey, you know, uh, if we don't let cars come in, we'll help the environment. So let's go electric, okay? And I saw uh, J- uh, John Oliver did a bit this week on his show about electricity and about the electric grid, the power grid. And he said, if tomorrow America went totally electric cars, the grid couldn't handle it. The grid would collapse, yeah. yeah the grid couldn't handle it, not as it currently exists. So they've got to do something about that grid because eventually all America are going to be electric cars. Um, and he was just saying that, you know, that, that it's, it would be impossible to accommodate everybody who needed electricity. So, And then, uh, he, you know, Bill Maher had a great idea. And I don't give Bill Maher much credit for anything. Uh, but he had a great uh, scheme. And it it made sense. Now, where are all the uh, electrical outages? Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What was it? Where, yeah, where are all the power outages and, and so on? And the fires and so on? California. Where uh, is it? Now, what was it he was saying? We should take energy from the East Coast 
and send it to the West Coast. Okay? Because we've got more than enough. You know, we don't have any trouble creating power. But you do. Really? Oh. Well, your rivers are going down, your dams are going down, all that's going down. We have more than enough water here because it rains a lot. So why don't we somehow send the power that we generate, the excess power, to California? That would work. You know, that we should, I don't know if it's possible. I guess you'd have to do it over the power grid. But we don't share our power. We share it with other states here. But we don't share it with the West Coast. And probably through the transmission lines that already exist, we could send it. You know? So it's, it was just a thought on his part. I'm trying to remember what the context was of that. But, you know, my brain's going. I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm an old man. Leave me alone. We're elderly. We yes, yeah. we're very elderly. <laughs> the elder. Well, you know what I hate about my age? is I, I don't like being called... Um, Oh, I don't like... if. How old are you, Alex? Well, I'm 82. I'm going to be 82. And they go, oh, 82 years young. Fuck you. I hate that. Yeah. I hate 82 years young. And then what do we call ourselves? I, I do... I the, the, There's probably nothing wrong with seniors, but it bothers me. Because I don't want to think of myself as a senior. So what do I call myself? I haven't decided... But they, you know, they they do all these things, and uh, they they uh, uh, they have all these nice terms for it. Really, what it is is your body is starting to rot. Okay, that's it. <laughs> you know, it, it age. Oh, it, uh, what I would say is we should respect our elders, which we don't in this country. Not in this country, no. But I wouldn't have said that when I was twenty. So, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting what I deserve. Okay. You know. We'd be revered in Asia. <laughs> well, anywhere, England, they take care of their old people. They make sure they're you know they get enough money, and I think they get a vacation once a year in a foreign country. You know, so I mean, they, other countries look upon older people as being the people who contributed, who did their contribution to the nation, and now it's our turn to take care of them. But we don't have that feeling in this country. You're old. Fuck you. You know. Yeah, I think I think we're we're going to be. I think they want to euthanize people in America when they get old. <laughs> oh, they would like to. They would love yeah. to. But uh, you know. So I want to talk to you about something because it happened and uh, we haven't talked to you about it and you are involved. Uh, we lost Mort Saul. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Now you knew you knew Mort. Pretty well. Pretty right. well, yeah. He befriended me and uh, just an amazing man. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was 94. So uh, he was in bad health, but uh, someone told me he died in his uh, home. Yeah. He won his last battle, they said, because the, they were trying to get him to go to one of those assisted living places. Yeah. And he fought against that like hell. So he, he never wound up going there. So that was great. Right, right. So what? What did he die? Just old age, or? Yeah, I didn't hear the exact cause, but he just had like just everything was going wrong, you know. So yeah. So it was just a matter of of time. Yeah, you get it when you get that age. It's like a cascade of problems. So. Yeah, yeah. But he was. Uh, I don't think there's been anyone. In, didn't he revolutionize stand up comedy? Well, I don't know. Well, let me see. I'm trying to think. I'll tell you. He was around at the same time as uh, Len Lenny Bruce. Mm -hmm. And they both played the same clubs. Uh, so there was a, you know, there was a, there was just a thing where the two of them were, um, were the big comics of the time. And then you had other people kind of coming up at that time. Shelley Berman. Phyllis Diller, um, you know, but they were the first, and they were they couldn't be more different, you know, because Mort Saul was the political comic, the political yeah. humor. Uh, Lenny Bruce was outraged with society, you know, and that was his place. And I, my favorite comic of the two, I like Saul at least in the beginning. 
But I really loved Lenny Bruce. Uh, and I remember that as a kid, I thought Lenny Bruce was terrific. Uh, and I think if you would say, who was uh, to me, who was the best comedian of the two, I would say it was Lenny Bruce. Okay. Uh, but Mort Saul's a close second because what he did is he defined political comedy. Not that other people hadn't done it. I mean, Will Rogers was doing it, you know, long before Mort Saul ever came along. Um, but he, he did it so well. I remember he. I've, I saw him work, you know, when I was a kid. And he would come out on stage with a, with a newspaper under his arm, and then he would look at the front page of the newspaper, and at least the first part of his act was commenting on the day's news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, he did it pretty well, uh, uh, you know, Im- improvisationally. Uh, and um, he, he was, you know, he was really good. He was really terrific. I mean, I liked what he did. I remember that. What happened was as he got older, he became somewhat insignificant can i say that yeah he was not as important which, which happens in the business yeah, it happens. He, he was not as important uh and it, i think that got to him and he became a little goofy like he became right wing uh where he'd been very liberal he, he became kind of right wing and he was all over the place and he kind of lost me and a lot of other people at that point uh, well he he the thing that hurt his career the most was he became quite obsessed with the Kennedy assassination. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, but, I mean, he, he rather than realize that your job is to be funny, sometimes things get a little serious in your mind. And he was, but he was terrific. I mean, you know, no question about it. But oh, yeah. I, but yeah. I don't think later on. I think early on he was, you listen to some of his stuff and it's terrific. Yeah. He showed me. He knew everybody. He showed me a picture. He was driving. It was the late sixties in L.A. He's driving. He just bought a Shelby Cobra. He's driving it off a lot. And I said, "Who took the picture?" He said, "Steve McQueen." Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and he so he took he took a, he, he oh wow that's terrific. And he he became great friends with Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen came to the Hungry Eye to see him one night when they were filming Bullet here. Hmm. And then he had a, he had this great story about he, he JFK loved him. He wrote for JFK, and uh, he said they were on Air Force One once, and they hit the really bad turbulence. And after it calmed down, Saul said to JFK, "Well, what do you think would have happened if our plane had gone down? How do you think the news would cover it?" And <laughs> JFK said, "Well, your name would be in very small print." <laughs> <laughs> That's well, true, you know. <laughs> you, you don't want to. You don't want to die uh, in a plane crash with somebody more famous than you, right? You, you know, it's just you know. You don't want it to say uh, JFK was killed today and others. You know, uh, but uh, but no, I, you know, he was he was he was terrific. I'm trying to think what other comedians uh, uh, influenced me. You know who influenced me a lot. Stan Freeberg. Oh, okay. Uh, heard of him? Not really. A, don't think I've seen him. But well, was, no. Stan Freeberg did records. He did uh, parody records of things, uh, and he uh, he he was very funny, very funny. But he worked on records. He didn't he didn't work on stage. Uh, oh, okay. But but he influenced me because his sense of parody was what influenced me um and uh, so much so that when i was growing up i i wrote him and i sent him th- some stuff that we had done i and a friend uh, roy trumbull sent him some stuff we had done and uh said what what do you think you know i just just mailed it to him okay found his address mailed to him well he didn't answer me but he had a guy who later ran an advertising agency and who was working with him. Uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name now. He he wrote us back a letter. And it was like a three-page critique on how it was, what was good about it, what was bad about it, how you could make it better. I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was a, a, just awesome that 
I mean, I consider this Freeberg replying to me, even though he had somebody else do it, you know. But that they took that much time out. Yeah. Just two kids, amazing. you know. Uh, and, and so all of that kind of influenced me, you know, as a, you know, as a thing. But anyway. Be great if you still had that letter. Yeah. What? What? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, you know, I I kept it for years. Now that I remember. But anyway, what? 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 what, what comedians influenced you? I don't think I've ever asked you that. Oh, I, I had. Uh, well, strangely enough, Jonathan Winters, who I'm nothing like, but uh, and Shelley Berman, and uh, I had I had all their I memorized their albums. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I love Shelley. Shelley Berman was funny. He was incredible. Yeah, he was incredible. Um, what did you think of some of the black comedy com- comedians like uh, Godfrey Cambridge and uh, I don't remember the other guy's name? Uh, uh, I liked the uh, what was his name? I'm trying to think. He was on he was on TV a lot. I liked him. He, Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory. Yeah, yeah. that's who I was trying. I to liked think. him and Godfrey Cambridge. Yeah. They were terrific. There yeah. were a lot of terrific comics back then. But it was not the comedy you wound up doing or that people wound up doing in the, in the uh, say, in the 80s right. as stand-up. Yeah. Stand-up then changed from that, you know. I mean, you had people who filled some of those gaps, like, you know, Will Durst uh, filled the gap of uh, uh, what Mort Saul was doing, you know. But it's still, there's a... The uh, question is to whether, you know, the gaps were filled completely because Saul was just so unique at the time. So, And and the thing about uh, Lenny at the time is he was just considered the dirty comedian. You know, so a lot of people just wrote him off for that. But there was more to his comedy than that. And you listen to it today, and it's so classic that it still holds up. Yeah. Really, I'll have to check it out. But it's amazing that uh, a, a comedian actually got arrested for. Well, I mean, saying, yeah, but you know, Saul's stuff, oddly enough, didn't hold up because it was all topical, you know. Uh, and um, but uh, then again, funny is funny, so you maybe you could listen yeah. to some Saul and laugh. I had a friend oh. who turned out an album called The First Family. Uh, with Vaughn Meter about the Kennedys. You may remember it. Uh, not only, it, it actually won an Emmy for it, Best uh, Album. Uh, not Emmy, a Grammy. Grammy. Grammy, Grammy. Yeah, Grammy for Best Album. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, it was an incredible piece of work. Uh, and I went back and played it 20 years later, just, just for the hell of it. And I played it on the air. And everybody said, it held up because it, it, it wasn't the Kennedys that you could relate to at that point, 20 years later. But the fact that the incidences in this album are all funny. They're funny premises. So uh, funny can last, even in the face of that kind of uh, time frame, you know, that the Kennedys were no longer alive and Kennedy got killed and you're not supposed to laugh at him and so on and so forth. But the fact is that funny is funny. Yeah, well, a lot of comedy doesn't age very well, but uh, I think uh, people like W.C. Fields and Chaplin, they're still great. No, oh, what's his name? What's the comedian we all feel is Perry Kurtz? I think his com- comedy, <laughs> his comedy is classic. It will last. I mean, it will play the same way twenty years from now that it plays <laughs> right now, which is not at all. Okay, so anyway, why do we always use Perry Kurtz as a butt of our jokes? He's a good guy. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Nice guy. Means well. Oh, I got a. I, I got to give you one more Saul line before he goes. Yeah. He got hired by uh, George W. Bush to write some material for him once or something. And they were talking, and uh, and Bush was going on about how he had become a born again Christian. And Saul said, "If you're going to be born again, why would you come back as you?" <laughs> <laughs> And so we, on that note, <laughs> we say goodbye to Larry Bubbles Brown for this goodbye, week. Yeah. <laughs> goodbye, Bubbles. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. 
Where are we? Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay, we got the audio up. All right. Uh, wait a minute. We had a we had a problem here. Uh, I uh, uh, for some reason uh, this thing went off and it uh, it uh, it did a, a a really weird deal here, where it started beeping towards the end. Did you hear that? Anyway, I um, uh, forget it. I'm not even going to worry about it. Anyway, uh, hey, we got a whole bunch of people waiting to come on tonight. Boy, what a difference from last night. Okay, let me just uh, uh, get these people joining here. There we go. There's uh, Kevin, and there is, oh, there's uh, there's Brian, and there is, hello. Hello. Hey, hey. how are you doing? How are you doing? Hi, Alex. Oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, speak louder. I told you. Okay, hello, Adrian. <laughs> what what is that you got in your hand, Adrian? What's that? Oh, that's is that a elf on the shelf? Is that what it is? Hey, no more talk. I banned her, so she. I told her to talk. Is that an elf on a shelf? Is it elf on the shelf? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is it, is that what it is? Did you tell Uncle Alex that you got banned off of TikTok? What? what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> you, you, you. By the way, in case people have just tuned in, that is not a puppet. Uh, <laughs> it's not a. Hey, actual... Alex. How are you? <laughs> no, so. Uh, 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 what do you mean she got banned from TikTok? She, she told me she got. She said, Daddy, I got banded. And I said, oh, you got banned off TikTok. Well, why did you get banned from TikTok? Because, so it says daddy's account, you know, on, on the title. But because she keeps, she's posted like over like maybe 100 videos. But there are all these dance things, you know, that they're doing on TikTok. You know, all these girls are doing. But she's doing them. She's got a crop top and shorts and stuff oh, like that. Oh, so really? Like, yeah, so a couple <laughs> times. I check her account, too, but she she posts so many I can't keep up. Wait a minute. Did you know she was doing this? Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 I know that I deleted the ones that were too, you know, too provocative or whatever. It's like I started deleting them, <laughs> and then they had, like, one video that was banned, and then another video that was banned, and all of a sudden she's cut off. <laughs> so, she still doesn't understand why. She's just copying all the TikTokers, but yeah, but yeah. she's only six. So that's yeah, well, I blame I, it on her. You got cut off. <laughs> yeah, I know my email. So they're coming after me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but let me let me let me get this straight. Well, she was do she that, was, Adrian. It, now people aren't familiar on TikTok. There are these women who dance many times. You can't do nudity, okay, on TikTok, right, okay? Right, right. But they're everything else but nude. Okay, I mean they're wearing tight outfits and they're twerking and they're doing all of that. So she was emulating that. Yes. Well, what, yes. What's your opinion of her doing that? I I was cutting them. I was deleting a bunch of them while she would put them up there. I tell her, no, 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 can't put that one up there. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You gotta put parental guides on your TikTok there. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. They're coming after me on my TikTok. That's the thing. I'm not on TikTok except for her. You know, we see her infrequently now. So every time we see her, she is just growing. Yeah. How old is she now? How old are you, Adrian? Six. Six? Six. Wow. Can you stop eating popcorn for one second and talk to the show? <laughs> I'm so glad they didn't have TikTok when my kids were six. Okay. Did you want to say something else to Alex before you leave? No? Okay. No. She was practicing before. She says, hi, Alex. And I said, what else are you going to say? She goes, oh, Alex, you look good today. <laughs> you going to say that? Okay, bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> You want to sing? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Wait, 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 hold on oh, a second. Okay. Wait a minute. If she, if she wants to sing, I'd like to hear her sing. Oh, no. No, 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 no she sing. wanted to see because I have the show right here. So she wants to see herself on the show, which she can look oh. straight ahead to see herself on the show, but she wants to see her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is she, uh, okay. you know, with these TikTok videos and stuff, uh, she's heading in a direction. <laughs> you better be careful about it. Rock said, just keep her off the pole. Yeah, maybe, maybe, 
well, maybe, That's my job. Keep her off the pole. Maybe by the time, <laughs> by the time that she gets, yeah, by the time that she gets, uh, well, do you, yeah. Okay, okay, uh, they know. Uh, uh, well, what do you show? What is that? It's, it's, the show. Us. it's us. Yeah, it's the show. Oh, I see. Okay. She, yeah, she does nonstop dance. You know, she does, she does, uh, she does um, ballet, one hour of ballet on Tuesday, one hour of, of tap on Tuesday, and then one hour of hip hop on Wednesday, one hour of jazz on Thursday, and one hour of competition practice on oh, Thursday. Boy. So, yeah, they're doing a Christmas thingy coming up, and then January they compete. So is she good? So, yeah. Well, yeah, she, you, you don't want to yes. you don't want to say around her that she sucks. No, yeah. no. She, <laughs> before the COVID, we had her doing everything. She, we had her doing piano, soccer, uh, basketball, everything. And then she, I know, I know she wanted to do dancing, so she kept. Yeah. So we did all dance. Yeah. Okay. Say good night. Okay. Good night, Adrian. Say good night, Adrian. Say good night Gracie. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Back to the show. Wow, six years old. When's the first time? How old was she when you first put her on here? Oh, oh, he's uh, no. Okay, okay, bye. Um, she was. <laughs> it's over a year. You know ago. something? She's like you, you've been watching TV a lot, and these news people do their stuff from home, and all of a sudden they got a cat going in front of the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like the cats. Oh yeah, 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 and then usually, usually I lock the door, and I didn't, and I was on a China call at night, and so she just comes walking in, and she's waving, and I'm like, oh my god. By the way, anybody see this video of a football player beating up his girlfriend? Yeah. Did you see that thing? Yeah. Well, am I the only person that noticed something about that video that nobody seems to be mentioning? The baby was crying at the end. Well, the baby was crying at the end, but there was one other. A, a, a sentient life form in the room. There's a cat. Oh. And the cat sees what's going on and goes, Wah! <laughs> and oh jumps over onto a couch and, zit, and just heads for the door. Oh. You know, that, that that's, probably wasn't that, the first time. I'm not noticing the fact he's beating the crap out of his girlfriend and throwing her all over the room mm. like she's a pinata. But I noticed the cat. Yeah, and I, I just saw the video tonight, and I heard they had a. Uh, I thought they had like two views of cameras. So did she? Was she the one who put the cameras in? She there? put the cameras in because he had beaten her up before, and she didn't have. She had cameras at that point, but she didn't get turn them on. She didn't have oh. them on this time. She had them on. Oh man! I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. And they they took the guy and they booked him, and I think they only. Uh, the bail was only fifteen thousand, five thousand dollars, something like that. You know, which is ridiculous. I mean, for something like that, it should be a lot more. Yeah. Um, is this a pro player or? A he, yeah, yeah. He, he he was. He's not he any was. longer. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Zach Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. What do they do when they're when they're auditioning football players? Do they do a like a. a you know, question and answer period with them going, uh, so uh, do you play football well? Yes. Do you know how to throw a ball? Yes. Uh, do you beat your wife? Yes. Okay, good. You're on the team. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just getting to be ridiculous, you know, but anyway, how you doing? Let's see. Yeah, we got, uh, we got, oh, we got Kevin here and we got Brian here and we got Alan here and we got, well, Charlie. Yes. Great to have you here, uh, Josh. Uh, good to see you here tonight. Uh, uh, somebody who called us a couple of nights ago, and now here he is again. Jerry is calling us, and of course Jeff is there. And you're Long welcome listener, to join first time us. Caller. As well. What? Long time listener, first time caller. First time mm -hmm. caller. Yeah, right. Well, not, you're, you're not a first time caller. You're a second time caller, aren't you? I missed out. Doing that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and he's an Eagles fan. <clears throat> well, no, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Tyler's our Cowboys team. Fan. Cowboys okay. Fan. Yeah. Eagles. You saved me, Charlie. Eagles. Is that Philadelphia? Yeah. See, there's a funny thing I have, an ability I have, is you name a team, and I'll tell you what town they're in. And I don't know anything about football. But somehow, I just, I don't know, I have this innate thing that it's, it's, 
maybe it's like I, I absorbed it every time I heard something about a team or whatever. So I knew I, I, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles, right? Gee, I, Cleveland. What about the baseball team, Cleveland? What's that name? Uh, well, I know the baseball team was Cleveland Indians. What? Right. Were. Not anymore. Not they, anymore. They just changed it. They're the, what? what is it now, the Cleveland uh, Native American peoples? No. no. The Cleveland I, baseball team. What was wrong? <laughs> See, here's what I don't get. If you looked at the Indians, okay, Indian is a perfectly, I think, it's, a, it's not okay. You're supposed to call them Native Americans now, but you can call them Indians. And the, the, the logo wasn't like some big nose, tomahawk wielding, you know, not like, like not like, it, yeah. It's the Guardians. Uh, yeah. Cleveland I, Guardians. But I like the, you know, but the, the logo is a very proud Indian face, kind of the one you have on the nickel. Nobody's complaining about the one we got on the nickel. Well. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't get it anymore. Mm. You know, so uh, cancel the nickel. Cancel the nickel. Cancel the nickel. Right. Well, who uses nickels anymore anyway? <laughs> you, why do we still have pennies? Is what I wonder. Yeah. I've got oh, a yeah. jar in here oh, yeah. that we filled up to the brim. <clears throat> you know, one of these big uh, uh, water bottles <laughs> uh, filled with pennies. There's no way we're going to get those to any bank, and there's no way there's any bank that's going to take them. Well, you might have one of those million-dollar pennies in there. You ought to go through them. Oh, really? I don't. Yeah, there's a bunch yeah. of my neighbor next door here goes through pennies, and he says, you know, he's he knows all the ones that are struck once or misstruck. Yeah, you know, that are worth ten thousand dollars. You know, and yeah. he'll tell me all about all these pennies. Oh, you, you know, this guy found this one. It was worth $10,000, and it, it has a, a dot on the buffalo's ass or something like this. You know, <laughs> you know, he, oh, yeah, they did, only did three of those and, you know, stuff like that. Well, he's welcome to come over to my place and go through them. He probably would. <laughs> Coin star. I'd say he could probably stay in our guest room, but I have to figure he's going to be there for several years. <laughs> probably, <laughs> you know, looking on Buffalo's asses. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, Alan. So two things. One thing, Brian, about pole dancing. Go on YouTube. There's tons of people where they're these women are pole dancing, and the pole falls down out of the ceiling. There's Alan. You want, you want to learn? You want to learn how to support that. And the second thing is, pennies are important. How else would we have developed copper wire? Two Jews fighting over a penny. Now, you're telling anti-Semitic jokes like we don't have enough trouble with other people doing them? But I'm Jewish. What difference does that yeah. make? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, so the big news today is... Uh, a that, white guy kills a white guy. What difference does it make, right? <laughs> right, right, right. White on white crime doesn't count anymore, you know. Um, but this was... Kyle Rittenhouse was white on white crime. Yep, I'm talking yeah. about. You know, yeah. in fact, I saw a lot of black... But every time I go to MSNBC, they'd have, like, some black people saying how terrible the decision was, and blah, 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 it blah, was. you know. And whatever, yeah, it was. But, I mean... In our opinion, it was not. If you talk to Phil Meyer, who sent me, uh, uh, sent me too, uh, yeah. sent me a message going, "Yay, we won!" Or something. <laughs> I, you know. I was in Wegmans where my brother got not guilty for him. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, but anyway, like any, anyway, um, that was you know that was white on white crime. But they put yeah. these these uh, these people on to discuss it, and they put nothing but black people on. And they're <laughs> railing against the verdict. I mean, I'm going, wait a minute, well, shut up. It? It, for once, we had a crime committed on us. Why don't you come to us and ask us, you know, what we think? So the only, you know, Phil... And by the way, Phil, one of them, at least one of them was Jewish. Yeah. 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 Those are from, yeah. yeah. So, so we, we all get our, we all, all of us here get our news from a source that we believe. Mm -hmm. that whatever, MSNBC, CNN, whatever. Phil, since he's a Republican, gets his news from Republican stuff. Yeah. So the Republican side was he was not guilty. And, you know, before the... Well, he what is not guilty. <clears throat> There's no you question about what? that. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, though. I'm going to make a point here. The point is, is that 
the news services don't really know what happened. Doesn't matter if it's conservative or liberal. Mm -hmm. But we take the liberal side because that's the media we watch and believe in. And so the, the, the liberal media didn't really know what happened. The only people that really knew was the defendant and the people in the courtroom. Yeah. So, and, uh, you know, the, well, but, I mean, but here, it here's was the a thing. lawful it, decision. It, no, we know what happened, basically. Okay. Yeah. There are two truths here. Number one, that he's not guilty. Okay, that was the verdict on the part of the jury, so he's not guilty. But the other truth is, he did kill two people and injure one. He never That's denied right. that. That's right. You know, that was never at issue. What right. was at issue was his motivation. And if it was legal. And if it was legal, yeah. So, I mean, those things are, are, are definite, but... You know, as I watch these things, think, uh, uh, these people on television today that they asked to talk about it, they were all like black. And I'm going, wait a minute, what, what isn't, I never had anybody say during this trial, this may have been an anti-Semitic crime. Because I think one of them was Jewish, maybe two were Jewish. Yes, yes, Charlie. Um, the reason they keep bringing blacks on is because it was a Black Lives Rally Black Lives Matter rally that they were at, and they were supporters of Black Lives Matter. And that's why blacks are so upset. That it's fine to kill white people if, they, if they're if they on the side of blacks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if Rittenhauer or whatever is... Ritten Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse. If he, this is how much I know about it. Thanks. So <laughs> if he was black in this country... You would have, I would have bet you he would have been convicted of murder. Well, he'd be dead. The cops would have shot him at the scene. Yep. <laughs> he had a Wisconsin? fucking AR-15 at, yeah. at a place where yeah, shots well, were fired. No, you know, he would I, have been dead in seconds. All these things. Yeah, Rice was killed two seconds after the cops pulled up. All, all those things, gun. all those things, Charlie, are a given. Be. But as I said, the other given is that he killed two people, two people and injured one. Okay, he never denied that. That was never an issue. The issue right. was whether he felt threatened and was he defending himself. Right. That was the only issue here. Uh, Nobody cared whether the two the people that he killed were thre felt threatened and were defending themselves. Right. Do you feel the judge in this case was kind of an asshole? Definitely, there's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Although that was a loaded question, I shouldn't have put it that way. Because I'm getting, you know, I, I'm basically saying I think he was an asshole myself, you know. Well, he was so. buddy buddy with, with Rittenhouse. Yeah, yeah. And his lawyer, too, probably. Well, I mean, he, said, he told them that they could not call the, the people that got killed victims. They're fucking I, dead, but they can't be called victims. I'll tell you the part that was driving me crazy today, and I don't know mm -hmm. if it was getting to you, were all, every one of the news organizations was going. Are there going to be riots after this? Are there going to be riots after this? Well, you know, if you keep saying that enough times, there will be riots after this. Yeah. You know? I think there'll be riots anyhow. Now, wasn't this the trial where uh, MSNBC and NBC at large got banned from the courtroom? Yeah, he yeah. threw them out. Yeah. yeah, he threw them out. And with good reason, because somebody at MSNBC was following the uh, the uh, jurors home or something to find oh, the bus right. to find out who they were not a smart that movie. was the rumor that wasn't actually what happened what I heard what happened well what what did they, what'd you hear happen I heard that they was at a traffic stop and the bus was traveling by and they and that's why they thought he was tracking the uh, the bus mm-hmm but they he were was, they were permanently banned from the courtroom weren't they yeah yeah you know, to me to me not not you know, I, it, being, being a former cop, to me, you know, self-defense is okay. Say the kid had the legal right to carry a handgun concealed. Which he, he didn't. Did. Have, he was only 17. Right, right. I'm, I'm going to get to that. But say he did have the legal right to carry a concealed handgun. Uh, an AR-15 is not concealed. Not concealed. So, <clears throat> so if he did that and he felt threatened, then he could draw the gun and do whatever needed to be done. Mm -hmm. You bring an AR-15 to a as a white person to a Black Lives Matter event, and there's going to be violence in my mind. I mean, you know, people are going to say, what are you doing with this assault weapon or, or whatever you want to call it? You know, it's, 
You know, it just it, it didn't belong there. And it, it surprised me that they found them not guilty based on that. How do you prove self-defense? I mean, it's it, it's tough, but the guy, the guy, you know, you, you bring a cannon to a to a, a Black Lives Matter thing and you're white. You're automatically going to be threatened by people. It just—it's the way things work. Well, also, if you're going with a gun like that, I mean, isn't that evidence enough that you were going somewhere because you intended to use that thing? You yeah, know, you didn't. You, you were—you didn't. weren't taking that rifle with you to protect yourself. That's right. That's right. You know, and, I, I, and, I, and yeah, I don't buy that for a minute. And you know, I'm pro gun, but you know, uh, the thing that Phil missed the other night was. In order to use deadly force, there's three requisites or prongs. He used the chair thing, mm -hmm. but he could he, he missed one of the things. So in order to use deadly force, it has to be immediate, inescapable. You can't run away or get away from it. And the threat of death or bodily injury to yourself or others. That that is the that is the Supreme Court, that's the same in probably every state, including California. Mm -hmm. And and they call it the three-pronged uh, 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 you know, chair the or whatever. The three, three, three-legged stool. Need, if yeah. any one of those is missing. So somebody breaks into your house and you have a gun, you can, in, in, well, in Florida, you can stand your ground, but most states you can't. So you can exit the house in California. Mm -hmm. You would need to... If you had a door that you could leave and walk out the kitchen door, you could do that versus confronting the person and killing them or shooting okay. them. Well, let me, let me ask a couple other people here. Uh, Jerry, did, were you paying attention to this case at all? Intimately, you said last night. I was just uh, checking out the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the, the updates <laughs> when it first happened, but I was not surprised about it. You weren't surprised with the way it turned out? No. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, how about you, uh, jo uh, Josh? No, I didn't follow it very closely. No, not not really. Oh, okay. All right. How about you, Brian? I mean, I'm aware. I'm aware of it. You know, yeah. a little bit, and uh, but I didn't really follow the trial very much or anything like that. Mm, yeah. How about how about you, uh, Brian? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched a little bit of it, and then I watched some of the stuff tonight. Yeah. And you know, they're they're saying there was video of you know the the guy hitting him with the skateboard and and all this other stuff that there was claiming the self defense part, but I still don't see how shooting somebody you know like that. Well, but. a skateboard you can kill somebody, but you know I, I got to tell you the guy that hit him with the skateboard, a uh, guy's got an <laughs> AR-15 in his hand. I'm not going anywhere near <laughs> this guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, know, uh, you can uh, take you can take paint off the yeah. wall with this thing. Uh, Brian. Yeah. I mean, not Brian. I mean, Kevin. Any thoughts? <clears throat> well, from what I saw, I wasn't surprised with the uh, the decision. Uh -huh. um, not that I agreed with it, but I still see the reason that they they uh, came to that decision, thinking well, that you well, know <clears throat> those are the laws that are in the state of Wisconsin that he could carry it. I don't think he should have been there, but he have, was. Haven't they since changed some of those laws? Or is that the other trial that's going I on? I don't know. I don't know about the 17-year-old part either. I don't know if he was old enough to have a gun. That might have been the... Well, he took it across state lines. Isn't that against the law? No, he was He was there. I heard that. That was something that came out after the trial. He was already there, and he was in the state, and the gun was already in the state. Yeah. So that didn't happen. That All that stuff that happened during the trial was not true. So that stuff, he was already there. And the gun was already there, so that was all out the door. Isn't the gun uh, an illegal straw purchase? So essentially, he was. Right. He still didn't have the right to have a, as a seventeen-year-old, to have that gun. That I don't know, yeah. but that's yeah. kind of probably can. You know what I would love to hear from Kyle Rittenhouse, and we're not going to get it from Kyle Rittenhouse. I mean, he is now. He's home. He's home safe. Okay. I mean, yeah. he's got uh, you know double jeopardy. He could say tomorrow, I I did all that just like they said, and they were I mm -hmm. I, I got I skated. Oh, well, he's you looking know. for a new house. Is he? Oh well, yeah. They said he's thousands gonna move. and thousands of dollars. Yeah. Where's he getting the money from? The donation. They had a GoFundMe page. They they raised like a half a million dollars for it. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I wonder when he's going to run for public office. They'll probably vote him in. You know what? He, Man, yeah, exactly, Tony. A, a, a page now, or something at the Congress. 
Now that, that the, gates. Now yeah. that the criminal side is over with, now comes the civil side. Well, it can be a civil suit against him. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can bet the families of the people that he injured or killed are going to sue him yeah. for a lot of money. And the 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 burden of proof is a lot less in the civil case. Well, we found that with OJ. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know that that uh, people always say to me, "Well, you know, he got convicted," and I went, "No, he didn't. No, that was a civil case, and the the yeah. the burden of proof is much more relaxed in a civil case yeah. than it is in a murder case." It is actually. Yeah. That was a riveting case. By the way, you got to collect. Yeah. The guy that hit him with the with the skateboard. Hit him with the skateboard because he had just killed another person. Mm -hmm. So I don't see how you can call that self-defense. Yeah, it's kind of like with let's a, knock a down his rifle gun. that killed somebody, and you're going to go and try and, and take that guy out. Well, I kind I kind of liken this. I kind of liken this to Bernie Getz here in New York, who lived in my apartment and went down into <laughs> the subway, and uh, shot. Uh, at least one black kid in yeah. the in the he got, and, he got, but he, he but I you know I always said I felt the Getz went down there looking for trouble, yeah. you know he went yeah. down there to use that gun, okay, uh, and 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 he found some kids that just approached him in one way or another and tried to get some money out of him or something. He felt that was threatening. He, they may not have even done that, but he was looking for an excuse, and I think Rittenhouse was looking for an excuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Had Rittenhouse stayed home, none of that would have happened. Had your guy, had your your guy that lived in your place stayed home, none of that would have happened. I can't believe he lived in that apartment. That's unbelievable. Who? Oh, my, in my apartment? Yeah, you're, you're yeah apartment. I'm still. No, I, mo I moved, moved out. out. I, I moved out. And Bernard Getz moved in, and I As felt. A kid, I, well, I felt a guilty kid. ever since. And let me explain this to you. Oh if God. I hadn't moved out of that apartment and he yeah. hadn't moved into it. He probably would not have gone down into the subway and shot that kid. So it's my fault. You, you, you it's the, my hey, fault. You were by the Kinish place, right, Alex? Huh? Wasn't Alex, that from the Lower East Side? I think you said you buy. No. Did you buy the net the, no, the only shim of that? No, uh, no, no. no was for, that was later on. But oh, that was I, right, lived okay. on, I lived on 14th Street, a place called the Courtney House. Oh, okay. And um, uh, I was on the uh, eighth floor. And I got a call from somebody when this whole thing was going down. They caught this guy, and it's Bernard Getz. And uh, somebody called me and said, did you see where he lived? I said, I just saw it on TV. He lived in the Courtney house because they showed the outside of the building, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. And then the person said, yeah, you lived in the 7i, didn't you? And I said, no, I, I lived in, I don't I can't remember what the number was. Yeah. Oh, in uh, 7P, that was it. And I said, no, I lived in 8P. And they went, oh, shit. I said, what? <laughs> says, That's the apartment he was living in. And at that exact moment, I realized I didn't have a chance of winning the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes because all coincidence flew out the window. I mean, that's like a link to get <laughs> directly. I wonder if you got a lot of New York police in that building. You imagine, you imagine walking in there to someone. Imagine if you would have had a wallpaper like my mother, see what it went nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, did the, but, I'll did tell you. The two, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Did the two guys who were killed, mm -hmm. did they mm -hmm. have guns themselves? <clears throat> that's what I wonder. One of them did, yeah. One well, did. The one that injured had the gun. The one that lived. Yeah, the other two. The other two didn't. So the, the guy with the skateboard, did he get shot? Yeah, he was killed. He's one he of was one killed, killed, and the guy that had the gun admitted to pointing the gun at Rittenhouse. Oh, so he did well, point it. So that that changes. And he that. admitted it in court. See, I don't know enough about the case, but, that, but that changes things. But wait a minute, did he aim the gun at Rittenhouse after Rittenhouse showed that, uh, the, the, well, how was he high, he hiding? He already a, shot two people yeah. when he aimed the gun at Rittenhouse. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's self-defense that's right there. Yeah. So well, why did he shoot the, the two guys, the first two guys? So if I shoot up a bank or something and a cop comes in and, and aims his gun at me, I can say, I shot that cop in self-defense. No, it's a little different there. Court. It's a little different. A little no, bit. I'm saying it, it's a little different. How? When Rittenhouse so, was committing a crime so, when the guy pointed the gun at him. So the guy that pointed the gun at him, should, you know, was 
I, I don't know. You point a gun at somebody that's got a, 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 an AR-15. I'm not going to point the gun there and stand there for very long because, you know, I'm going to point the gun and shoot them. Shoot, yeah. You know, why did well, you I, 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 undoubtedly there was some, kind of, you know, there was a confrontation here because my instinct would be if I was there and Rittenhouse came up to me with a rifle, I would, be, would be to turn around and run. Yeah, I would be running so fast you would never see me. But, again. but nobody seemed to turn around and run. They yeah, seemed to confront know. him. That, that, the yeah. bullets out of that thing move at 2,500 Yeah, feet that's the problem. If you don't have a gun, run. yeah, you got to turn around and run. If you got that's a gun, true. your instinct is to pull the gun and shoot him before he shoots you. Absolutely. I don't know that's that I would even changing. do that. I think if I knew I could run and get away with it, I would just mm-hmm. run, you know, rather than shoot somebody. I mean, would you suddenly go out of it. your way to shoot somebody? Because... Like the wild west. Well, Rittenhouse went out of his way to shoot somebody. Well, just because he did it doesn't make it right. He came all the way from <laughs> Illinois. Exactly. He's firing. Let's let's get our guns up. There were crazy. there were too many crimes in Illinois. Well, I think I I, I I I think really we should let Rittenhouse uh, skate because maybe he was just being cranky that day. You know. He looks slow to me, Alex. Huh? He looks slow. He looks slow. Does this whole thing put a key He has that hole. slumping he face. Was having a bad day. Why did somebody say? I heard he was having. Oh, a bad yeah, day. Jerry, Jerry. Yo, doesn't this put a kink in? The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's it's one of the most ridiculous statements of all time. Well, you but never you know, know who's the good guy, who's the guy, bad that guy. Pulled, The guy that pulled the gun after Rittenhouse used the gun on somebody else should have shot Rittenhouse. Instantly, yeah. don't pull the gun and stand there with it in your hand. But you know, if they had yeah, shot, well, Ritt- if they had it. shot Rittenhouse, then they would have been on trial. You don't yeah, think yeah, so? But they were white, no. so he got because off he head. doesn't. <laughs> it's true. If they the guy, off, yeah. if the guy <laughs> that pulled the gun was to reversed. protect himself or others yeah, that man. were in danger, then he could shoot Rittenhouse. Yeah. Well, what is this? What is this going to do? Uh, 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 what is this going to do uh, all over the country to people uh, using guns and using them in self-defense and all these self-defense laws? I mean, do you think there are going to be more shootings as a result of this? Uh, Definitely, the Proud Boys are empowered now. They know they can go out and shoot anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about this, Josh? You're, you follow the the legal jurisprudence. You know? well, I don't know that it'll change a whole lot. I mean, I think it's kind of the same as it has been. I mean, I think that and I don't know very much about this case in particular, like I said, but I mean, apparently there was a third person there who also had a weapon. I mean, I think that if Rittenhouse had shot two people and the third person had pulled their weapon and shot him i think if that person was black and was dressed like a thug that he would have been put on trial for murder and he'd probably be guilty and he'd probably be in prison oh, yeah yeah definitely. so well, i think that's yeah. i think that's where we're at and i don't see that changing very much anytime soon in one direction or the other mm-hmm. because i don't see us really cleaning up our act anytime soon i mean the political landscape isn't going to get any more civil in the next, you know, probably at least a couple of years. Right. So I don't think that's going to change very much. doesn't seem like it to me. By the way, we've been joined tonight by Bernie Sanders. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. It's, Ray Renati has Bernie Sanders sitting in back behind him. Yeah, yeah he's, he stays over um, when he drops by the Bay Area because he doesn't have any super PACs or anything to Put him he's up. Cold so you there. put him up when he's in San Francisco. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, Alan. So, the guy that hit him with the skateboard was trying to, you know, stop him from shooting. If I'm close enough to hit somebody with a, a skateboard or something, I'm going to grab the weapon and take it away from him, or and in the process hurt him really bad. But you're you're you you you're a professional. You know, yeah, you're not, was, you, you've you been trained in how to deal with these kind of things. They, this guy with the skateboard wasn't trained in how to handle this. Except for once he hit Ritten, Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse, had, it, you know, it could have killed him by hitting him in the head. I don't know where he was hit. Well, I mean, but what, I, what, I, what I've said is that I, I've been trained in a martial art, which is really very helpful in situations like this, called run, run foo. 
<laughs> and it, it's that you just you just beat cheeks as fast as you can so there there are heel marks on your ass you've run so hard yes jeff i think a lot of people who go to these kind of uh a show if you want to call that a show this isn't a show this is a, this no, is a demonstration demonstration okay yeah. you're you're participating in a demonstration. what i people are going to bring their guns if they have one they're going to bring it with them well obviously because one of these guys who was shot had a gun, had a gun. yeah yeah and i think more people are going to say holy shit if i'm ever going anywhere i'm taking my pistol with me yeah yeah, but a pistol and an AR-15 yeah. are two different things. Yeah. Ray? A pistol is very concealable. Ray? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, I heard earlier, so it was legal for him in the state of Wisconsin to have that gun uh, okay. because they have a they have a law where if it's like a sawed-off shotgun, it's illegal because they had some gang problems in the past. Yeah. But you can be a minor and carry a gun open as long as the barrel is of a certain length. I know that's insane. But that's I heard that lot. was because of hunting, because sometimes yes. miners go hunting. Yes, that's why, because there's a lot of hunting in Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. Not in California. You got to be 20, oh, you got to be 18 to have a, a long gun, 21 to to uh, have a uh, to have a pistol. Right. I used to hunt, and my dad owned all the guns. That took care how of how about a machine gun? How old do you yeah. have to be for a machine gun? <laughs> you can't not, have it semi-automatic. Hmm? Yeah. Well, actually, not in California. In Texas, you could have a machine gun. Nevada yeah. too. You can have one of those uh, bump yeah. things. How the about bump. a oh, nu oh. How about a nuclear device? How old do you have to be to have a nuclear device? Forty-five. Hmm? Forty-five. Except in Arizona, you can be thirty. Well, I I don't know. I think that Adrian should be allowed to have a nuclear device personally. Uh, Yo, Adrian. Yeah. Hmm. I'll bet she'd get back on TikTok. Yeah. Are you? Who's the Adrian? Hmm? Who is Adrian? Adrian uh, is the daughter Brian's of daughter, uh, Brian's daughter, daughter who made a special guest appearance tonight. Oh, yeah, where Brian's were you? daughter, cheap daughter. I, I was out working out. Yeah, would you allow Adrian to have a nuclear device, Brian? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was just wondering. Because I think that's male bonding to be able to take your son out into the woods with a nuclear device. And uh, I hear all this stuff about, you know, about... Fathers bonding with their sons by going hunting. I never understood and that. And I <laughs> never understood I that one. Either. I mean, I did it. It was it's real. I bonded with my grandfather because he grew up on a ranch and hunted, and it was just like his life. It was awesome. But and now, when he when he when he shot something, uh huh. Okay. Did he then bring it home and eat it? Yeah, we ate all of it. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Then I'm. The, I have no argument about that. Oh, okay. See, I that. That's fine, but if you go out and you kill the animal, you leave the carcass behind, you take the head oh. and mount it on a wall, screw you. No, that would never happen in my family. Oh, okay. No All right. Yeah. 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 As we look behind Ray and see a moose head on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Bernie Sanders. Oh, that's I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it, it kind of looks like a moose head on the wall, but, you know. Um, another thing, you know, you're talking about civil actions and civil suits. This thing that's going on down in uh, Houston, because of this thing that happened at Astro World, in which ten people were killed, trampling each other at this concert, this Travis Scott concert. Uh, the they just filed the action against um, uh, uh, Live Nation, the promoter of the concert, and Travis Scott, and I believe they're also filing against. Um, uh, Apple, because Apple somehow was involved in it, but I'm not uh, entirely sure about that. They are suing for two billion dollars. Billion, billion, two mm -hmm. billion dollars. Well, they won't get that. Oh no, that's, that's pocket change for Travis <laughs> yeah. Scott. Yeah, yeah, right. Is Travis? I don't think so. Are you familiar with Travis Scott, uh, Charlie? See, I'm asking the black guy. I've never heard. Him before. <laughs> you know. I don't listen to hip hop, so it's not. The only thing I know about Travis Scott is he's the father of Kylie Jenner's kid. That I I didn't even know Kylie Jenner had a kid. Yeah, I, I, she I was, she also star. she also has a billion dollars. Yeah, I know that. She says right his there. it says his net worth is sixty million. Him personally, his is sixty million. Yeah. Well, I don't know where he's going to come up with the rest of the two billion. 
Mm. Well, they always overshoot those things. Yeah. Well, to begin with, uh, a live nation can be sued. Uh, it, it, anything that happens to live nation is folded into the whole suit with Travis Scott and everything else. So whatever they get or don't have to pay out, he doesn't have to pay out. But the thing is that uh, I'm sure Live Nation is, you know, insured to the to the hilt uh, because they do concerts all the time, and you don't do concerts without insurance. Although yeah, I don't they know, have a I five thought, million dollar policy probably or something. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if I. Gee, I guess we never had an insurance about uh, when I was doing my shows. I didn't like those shows. I'm going to sue you. Oh, That's okay. a different day, <laughs> different time. Different time, yeah. I didn't, we didn't yeah. even think about insurance. But, uh, you know, I can see people trampling themselves and trying to get to the stage when Larry Bubbles Brown is on. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he inspires that kind of excitement. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, Actually, I, when I Clayton's on. I feel a little sorry for Travis Scott. I don't think he was being... Uh, what do we call it? The irresponsible. Yeah, They're saying he was got, irresponsible. Got, he, Wait a minute, because he they said he he, <clears throat> he he wasn't paying attention to what was going on. Well, when you when you're on stage, you've got these earphones in, and you can't and they, hear anything. And, you can't and, see. And they're meant to cover mm -hmm. the ear. They they bright are noise canceling. Yeah, and then a bright light in your face, you, you don't see, see what's going on. Yeah. And in fact, they had security cops in front of the stage <clears throat> that weren't reacting to what was going on in the back of the. Uh, the, because uh, that kind of stuff happened the all the time at Travis Scott concerts, what I read. Yeah, he uh, he encourages that. that you remember the Who concert? Wait a minute, how does he encourage it? Does he tell him, hey, everybody, let's go trample ourselves to death? No, he's, what? Uh, he has them like, he run up, and he goes state. out in the audience, and they lift them up, and he has tells people to come up and... And do this shit. Yeah, but how does he whip them up that way? Is what I'm saying. I don't know. I just heard that he did. That, I that's just the report I read. Also, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that uh, I I I oh. would uh, I would admonish. <laughs> I would sue and and yeah. hope that the Live Nation loses because yeah. they are responsible for the safety of the patrons that are in that theater at that time. Travis Scott is not. All Travis Scott is supposed to do. <laughs> Is a show that pleases the audience. I agree. Right. I agree. 100%. Okay. Uh, and but their job mm -hmm. is to create a safe yeah. environment for people, a safe venue for people to watch a show in. You know. Is hip hop yeah. really music? Oh. And they're, said and they're, by the they're... said by the cis gendered middle aged white man. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And they're packing people in. I'm sure. I'm sure they don't sell those out. They just sell as many tickets as they I can. I would. I would tend to categorize it more as poetry, but you know, mm -hmm. um, some of it's bad poetry, but you know, uh, poetry nonetheless. Some people made a fortune. Eminem. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. Hey, do, do you remember in '79 when the Who had uh, '79? I think there was a Who concert where I think like 11 or 12. Yeah. Or, People got trampled and killed. Really? I don't remember. Oh that. yeah. Oh, I remember really clearly. Oh, you. Okay. That was that was the last time that they officially called them festivals, and they were supposed to stop festivals. Yeah. Festival seating, and now they call it um, general admission. That's yeah. how they're getting around it. Oh, I see. Okay. All so right. They were supposed to technically stop that festival seating. They got to get better and security. They supposedly, gotta... they're getting around it by calling it general admission. Invite, and that probably will come up pretty soon. Yeah. Invite the Hell's Angels to do security. Yeah. There you go. Um, um, yeah. Kyle well, you know, I'll see. tell you. I mean, the Who. I mean, it was really sad. It, uh, uh, Peter Townsend, after all those years in front of those amps, and wearing the earphones in his ears, uh, has went deaf. Yeah. Literally I deaf. How many of the people that uh, were and well, the wait a minute, wait a minute. And yeah. at one point, they were thinking of changing the name of the Who to the What. <laughs> <laughs> heard that coming. That's a good one. I heard that coming <laughs> so many times. Uh, yeah, well, it's the only real good joke I ever created. Okay, so I, I I use it whenever the opportunity is there, and somebody said the who, and I immediately went into the what mode. You know, it's one of those jokes you tell that you know what's coming, but it's still funny as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Fall for it every time. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it, 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 we're boy, we're living in strange times. 
We, you know, and now maybe is it is it because I'm eighty it going almost going on eighty two next month? Is it because I'm going on eighty two that I'm? Oh, I just no, say, oh gee, I, the world's going to hell in a handbag. No, hand, I just turned sixty and I feel the same way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were around, around seventy. I mean, it gets, I, I just had skin cancer taken off my freaking head. I thought maybe it was moulage from the last set. You I thought on. it was a, from a gunshot from a hunting expedition. No, and then I got one on my chest that might be even worse. So they had to do a biopsy. Uh, what do you do? You go out in the sun a lot? I did when I was young, yeah. Oh, when you were young, but not now. I and mean, it's just no, I did, out. yeah, a lot, a lot. Anyway. I was always tan, burnt. Pants are scary stuff. Well, yeah, yeah it. it, it, it you don't want to. It, 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 I, I always remember. I was supposed to. And I've told this story before, so please stop me. Well, don't stop me if, I, if you've heard it before, <laughs> because stop. you probably have. But uh, I was supposed to interview little Richard a few years ago. And uh, I was supposed to meet him in a hotel or whatever, and I was going to go up to his room and do it. And the Ooh. day of the interview, his assistant called up. <laughs> With the excuse that little Richard can't make the interview because he's come down with a touch of the cancer. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I remember you've told that one every time. It's funny as hell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but no, but it's true. It's not a joke. What stage? <laughs> I got a touch of the cancer. Woo! -hoo! You know, I, I got mean, a touch really of the cancer. But anyway, so. You know, I mean, it's just a crazy world we live in. I mean, I, I'm, uh, 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 let's see, where do you live again, Jerry? You're in? Uh, I'm in Southerton, Pennsylvania, which is yeah. north, uh, northwest suburb of Pennsylvania. Right, right, right. Um, it, well, you got a lot of craziness down there with the whole election deal. Oh, hey. And, you know, the fact that your vote was being questioned, you know. Um, all, all, yeah. all the Democrats' vote was being questioned when Trump was running. Yeah. <clears throat> there, I was watching a bunch of people talking about that, and we haven't talked about Trump in quite a while, because why? He's, he's a nobody he? now. Uh, he, he, he's, not even, he's not even treated like an ex-president. You know, he's not invited to the funerals. <laughs> Okay. You know. Right. You know. Anyway, so he... Um, uh, he, he's not invited to anything, and he they keep saying, "Oh, well, you know, he's going to run in 2020, 2020, what is it, twenty twenty four." And um, today, for the first time, I finally heard somebody on one of these talk shows say, "I don't think he's going to get the nomination." You know, and I've been saying that. I mean, I you know it's. He, he, why would you want to nominate a guy who's a proven loser? But not to the Republicans, he isn't. No, to, I, how many, you, are you talking about the Republicans in general? I don't know. You know, I don't I, think so. I think some of them are too intimidated to talk trash against him. But once it comes time to get a nominee for the party, I think you're going to see a lot of Republicans going for other people. Hmm. I think he's going to control the 2022 election. People that are that side up with him will uh, will win. Well, has it is that proved to be true so far? Oh, well, well, I'm working know. on it. I don't know. I'm just that's just my thought. I heard he's spending a lot of time. Back wait, wait, wait a minute, one at a time. Who who is talking? Oh, uh, it's okay. Charlie, Charlie. Charlie? I just I think Trump is going to have a heart attack and die before 2024. Yeah, baby. <laughs> From, from, from your mouth to God's ear. Uh, he's my mom's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ma, he's coming. Don't he's forget coming. to dump on him. Yeah, don't move into one of his buildings up there. Well, she, she would tell him you put me here, but you're not coming. Well, listen, your man. mother sounds like she was a good person, so if there is yeah. a heaven, which I... He shouldn't be there, Alex. ...sorely doubt. Uh, he, she, no, you know what she's, I hope, She's there, but I don't think he's going to show up there. No, I want him to show up there, right? And then she goes, oh, sorry, Donald, you're going down. And she gets yeah. down to hell. Yeah. He, and me and my son hate you and send him back You down. walked up the wrong flight of stairs here. Stand on Satan for us. Yeah. <laughs> Give my regards to your dad. Uh, how do you yeah, feel about that? Jerry, how do you feel about this? you think that, that Trump's going to have a hard time getting the nomination next time, or do you think it's a, a shoe in Well, 
No, I th- think he's not going to run because he definitely, I think, is going to lose. And one thing he doesn't like to be called as a loser. Um, but my more concern is uh, all the Republican legislations around the United States are changing all the election laws. So making elections moot. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah but Jeff? I think he's still a guy who, who loves money. And, and if he can take, get some couple of billion dollars, that would be great for him. Well, this is a guy who says, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. And by the way, send me $10. <laughs> you know, well, if you're a billionaire, pal, you don't have to ask people for money. How come he's not flying around in his 757 anymore? He doesn't, he to, he doesn't own it down anymore. Down to a Learjet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. That's sad. Isn't that rough? Don't you just hate it when you're down to your last Learjet? That's just, you know. know. That's rough. I'm not worried about when I need a slice of bread, this guy. Yeah. I can't stand Trump, though. I wish he would drop dead. Really? But did you, oh, you stop that, Tony? I know, but I don't then like I, then I, I, don't I, I have like the I Secret see. Service knocking on my door. Do you know this guy, Tony, on your show who said, <laughs> no, I wish he was dead? <laughs> It screws up the monetization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does. They'll listen to that and say, no, oh, hell, no sponsor well, wants to. Well, I don't think it's illegal to threaten a former president, but to threaten <laughs> a sitting president. But he's is... still president. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah, you're right, Ray. Just uh, well, technically, right. he still mm-hmm. has to be referred to as president. But do you know, do you know what I noticed? I was Sir, noticing the other day. Nobody refers to him as president. Nope. <clears throat> And they sir. all call him Trump. No, they all call him sir, because he always says, he said to me, sir, why are you so incredibly intelligent? <laughs> sir. <laughs> oh, you did a piece of work. Piece of work. Let me see here. I love that guy. <clears throat> and I mentioned this last night. Uh, what's his name? Uh, that guy does, uh, the, oh, the, oh, what's his name? You know. I don't know. Uh, the, uh, Fred the, Mertz. No, the, uh, the 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 guy who uh, Infowars. Infowars. Oh, Info Alex, Alex Jones. Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. Why why can't I remember that name, Alex? Jones. I don't know. You gotta remember it. <laughs> uh, he's been told by the, uh, the both the judges in Texas <laughs> and in uh, in Connecticut that he has to he's going to be liable for damages. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. For claiming, for claiming, among other things, that uh, uh, that uh, the whole uh, thing that happened in uh, uh, what's the name of the what's the name of that school? Um, oh, uh, the one in Connecticut. The one in Connecticut. Sandy Hook. Yeah, Sandy, Sandy Hook. Hook. Sandy oh, Hook. that was yeah. well, that was all a setup. That was a phony. Uh, that that was shameful. shameful, man. Yeah. That well, you see, the trouble is, the, these guys are willing to say these kind of things because they want to play to their audience. Mm-hmm. And they and they do, and then they they real they come to realize that they've done something that really isn't terribly legal, you know, and uh, uh, so he's getting he's getting he's going to have to he's going to have to fork out some money, uh, which could ruin him. He's calling for people to send him money. Yeah, send send money to help pay for my my defense. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. And they send him a lot of money, and then he spends it on, uh, like, wax lips and candy corn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, all these guys that raise money like this, like Trump raises money, where does that money go? In his pocket? It's the only th- way he makes money these days. Golf balls and, and, and uh, orange hair dye. Alex I, Jones, it says, is only worth five mil. Yeah. He's only worth <laughs> five mil? Worth yeah, five. but, I mean, with this lawsuit, that'll ruin him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they're what are they suing for? They're suing for a lot more than that. A lot yeah, more. A lot but more. he he doesn't have them. Well, I mean, relatively, he's got five million dollars, which is nice. But listen, I uh, claim you could sue Donald Trump for a billion dollars, and he'd never be able to come up with it. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. I think you're right. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, guys, guys are poor. So, what's our takeaway here, Josh? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> what we've been talking <laughs> about. I don't know. You bounced around to a couple different things. Yeah, they all were legal, though. They were all about legal stuff. You know, <laughs> suit in Texas and the Rittenhouse and the thing. show lawyer. Huh? And Josh is the show lawyer. Yes. And historian. 
And he's a historian and a more than a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. uh, he's the resident historian. He's, he's very good at that. Yes. you got to give him a minute so he can finish what he's eating. <laughs> I guess I would say that uh, we're fucked, but we'll be okay. That's a good historian. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're fucked, but we're going to be okay? <laughs> That is yeah. that's a combo. I'll, I'll tell you that's that, a quote. That, it, it's a it's interesting, one. Josh. You've just calmed me down. That was good because I thought we were oh, fucked too, but we'll be fine, right? Time for another. Oh, what's happening? Do, do you really think that we this democracy is that impervious against failure? No, no, nothing is. You know, I mean, well, I, 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 I'm not going to live. I'm not going to live to see it. God knows, I'm not. If I, I hope I live the, another twenty years and live to be a hundred. But even if I live to be a hundred, I'm not going to see it. But the, this, this democracy is going down, mainly because the people, the people who are the guardians of this democracy, which are the people, are getting ridiculous. They have no idea of what a democracy is. I think it's got so much worse with Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. I don't think it's worse because of Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump is the cipher through which yes. all this angst is gone. In other words, yeah. he was he in order to be elected, he had to be supported, okay? And he was supported because people have this feeling about all the stuff that's gone down. Right. You know, the country was right. Donald yeah. Trump. In other words, yeah. uh, it's like I used to say. People say, "Well, gee, you know, the Beatles came along and changed everything." I said, "Yeah, but if it wasn't the Beatles, it would be somebody else because the time was right for something to come along and create a seed change." It would have been the monkeys. Yeah, and, oh and there was a time for a Donald Trump to come along. You know. But uh, don't you and, and think that we have to world. admit that that Trump did a good job for himself to? Yeah. Take those positions. Well, he, he, yeah. no, he did a great job of, of taking advantage yeah. of the zeitgeist. Did everybody know what that means? The tempo of the times. Yeah. The zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite words. I think that's my German cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sam, Zeit- his last name Sa- is zeitgeist. Sam Zeitgeist. He's a tailor down yeah. in the Lower East Side. Yeah. I do oh, yeah. know a guy whose name, last name is Zeitgeist. Really? Yeah. Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. He's really? German, too. I didn't know you oh, named yourself not. Zeitgeist. It's his last name. It's his really? Last name. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, so, you know, I mean, it, it's just that I think Donald Trump, if it wasn't Donald Trump, it would have been somebody else. Yeah. You know. Uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's just... Uh, he's just Eventually. He's just... Uh, he's really a vessel, is what he is. And I thought George W. Bush was going to be the worst president in my life. He's like a saint now to everyone. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, I often, my, my, I my joke that. used to be that, uh, you know, didn't you think that the, when the day would come where you'd say, well, you know, Bush wasn't that bad. <laughs> and, and then you went, well, you know, Daddy Bush wasn't that bad. And then you go, well, you know, Reagan compared to Trump isn't that bad. Now that I think of it, Hitler wasn't that bad. <laughs> they couldn't vote him compared to Trump. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Uh, I th- love hey, Nixon. Hey, this has been a good show tonight, and we had all big attendance here. And uh, I thank you all for joining us, uh, Kevin. Always a pleasure to have you here. You know, uh, and and Brian, when you're not here, I feel alone. Okay, and it was nice of you to bring the little brat along with you. So. If you wanted to, actually, yes, you wanted to say hi. Future pole dancer of America. <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you, Alan, for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Charlie, God, I just always pray that it rains down there so that you can be on our show. Uh, Josh, uh, nice seeing you again. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night privately. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, we love having you here, so please keep calling, you know. Especially on the nights when nobody else is, you know. Uh, And uh, Jeff, thank you as always. And and of course, Tony, nice to have you here. And Ray, good to have you back. And sorry to hear about the cancer on your head, but you know, what the hell. What the hell? Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I will give you a big wave goodbye back, okay, at you. And um, uh, say good night. Okay, uh, let me see here. Where do I turn this? Okay, this is how I turn it off. There we go. Uh, I'm, I'm also again, once again, out of sync.
Okay, so anyway, but we'll go a little more into sync than we were. Uh, not now. Okay, now what is that all about? Anyway, I, I keep getting all these messages and stuff that, uh, uh, you know, I've got, I've got to turn this off or i got to turn that off or whatever. Anyway, hey, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And, you know, this kind of looks like a bad foreign movie, doesn't it? Badly synced foreign movie. Anyway, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow. Let's see, on uh, Monday, uh, we do our little pop up show at 4 o'clock. Great show. If you don't listen to it, you really should. Okay? And then uh, we'll be back again on uh, Wednesday. Uh, one show next week because we're taking Thursday and Friday off because it's, you know, it's Turkey Day. And, the, and then it's Black Friday, and i got to be down there rushing into those places and trampling people. Uh, anyway, that's it, everybody. See you, uh, see you uh, at uh, 1030 right here on Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And also, please, wear a mask. And if you don't, get vaccinated. Just do something to get us to, you know, whatever. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Herd immunity. That's it. Good night, everybody. I got to shut up because Jack's getting mad. And the music's over, too. <laughs>